Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to Cornerstone. My name is Josh Donnelly and in today's video we are going to take a look at how to get started with WooCommerce within the Cornerstone Builder. So without further ado, let's dive in. Now the first thing that we want to do is install WooCommerce. As you can see here, I've already installed it, so I'm just going to go ahead and activate it. With WooCommerce activated, there's a little bit of a setup process with WooCommerce, which we're going to kind of breeze over here and we'll jump right into our product creation. All right, so we have WooCommerce all installed and configured, but we have no products yet to sell. So let's go ahead and do that now. We can go ahead and click add products here, but because this will go away in the future, let's look at how we actually do this. We jump over to the left-hand side and under products over here, we can click all products, which gives us a listing. We don't have any yet, so we're going to jump down to add new. Once we're in the add new product, we can go ahead and just like any post, we can begin configuring this product. Now we're not going to get into the weeds on all of the back end of the products here. We want to look more at what we're doing in Cornerstone. So let's go ahead and give our product a name. We'll call this product A. We'll go ahead and grab some lorem ipsum right here and pop that into our product description. We'll go ahead and give it a price. Let's call it $10. Um, we could even give it a sale price. Let's call that $8. We need to give this product an image. We're just gonna use a placeholder for now. So let's go ahead and select our product image, go into our media library. And when you install WooCommerce for the first time, you'll get this little placeholder image. We're just gonna go ahead and use that here and set that as our product image. So now we have a product name, a product description, a product price and a sale price. You could get into all of these other details here. That's a little bit more complex than today's video. And you could even get into a short description, which might be just like a little brief intro of what this is. So something like this here, and we'll go ahead and publish. Now for the sake of example, let's go ahead and just add one more product so we can see what it looks like with more than one here. So we'll go ahead and click on add new. We'll go ahead and add product B. We'll give it a little description here as well. We'll make this one $25 with a sale price of $15 and we'll go ahead and give it a short description as well and we'll publish that but now if you have set up nothing else on your site and we were to jump over to our store page we're going to see something that looks like this here which is just the default shop so uh, depending on which stack you have set this is what you're going to see now what do i mean by stack well if you jump into cornerstone which i have in a tab here and you jump over to your globals, you'll notice that you have different stacks. I am on integrity here. If I were to jump into something like renew and we were to save, this is a global setting and we jump back over to our shop page here and we refresh, it's gonna have a slightly different style to it just based on what's in that stack. Now this page here is called the shop archive. So with various post types, we have archives like a blog archive or a custom post type archive, or in this case, a WooCommerce archive. And then within an archive, we have single posts and that would be a single blog post, or in this case, a single product, product A, product B. If I click on product A, it takes me to the single product page where we now have that product set up. But we wanna customize this. We wanna make this our own. So what do we do? Well, let's jump back into Cornerstone and it really doesn't matter what stack you have selected. I'm just gonna go ahead and do a starter stack. And to show you what the default is for the starter stack, let's jump back over and take a look at what the page looks like. It's gonna be pretty vanilla because there are not a whole lot of opinionated styles here. Um, that's up to us to create. And if we go back to our shop page, you'll notice that this is pretty vanilla as well. And that's good, that's where we wanna start. So again, you could do this within any stack, but we're gonna go ahead and use the starter stack. So. How do we get started building out our shop page? Well, we know that it's a WooCommerce archive, and so we need to add that. Now, before I go ahead and add that, you're probably saying to yourself, well, I know there's a shop page on the back end of my site, and you are not wrong. If we jump into pages, WooCommerce automatically adds a shop page and assigns that to your shop. But we do not want to edit this page. This page is almost like a placeholder that our archive is going to live on. So we don't want to touch this here. That was created and assigned by WooCommerce. And we're going to go ahead and leave that there. So we are going to jump back into Cornerstone here. We are going to click on the plus sign. And we are going to create an archive. But we don't want to create a normal archive layout. This would be for our blog or for a custom post type, those kind of things. We want to create a WooCommerce archive layout. And that's this one here. And this will only show up if you actually have WooCommerce installed. We'll go ahead and click Create. And now we are in business. We are creating our WooCommerce archive. 
Now, there's a couple of places you could start. The place I like to start is actually giving this a name, so we'll call this our shop. Then we can jump into settings here and create our assignments, because we want to make sure this all shows up properly. So we'll say add a condition, and we want this to apply to our shop page. So this is perfect. Now you could set this to something else if that was necessary, but for WooCommerce, shop is what we want. Now, one additional item that we want to make sure that we do, just so that we're previewing everything properly, is jump up into our preview pane here and make sure that we are also previewing the shop. With that done, we can go ahead and start building. Now, the quickest way to get up and running is obviously to use one of the pre-built templates. You could come in here, go over to ThemeCo, and choose from something here like Classic Light. And this is going to pull through a pre-populated, pre-designed shop page for you with various dynamic content and things already laid out. But I want you guys to understand how we get to something like this so that you can really build and customize your own. So we're going to go ahead and start from scratch. So let's select our section here and we'll just delete the whole thing. We'll click start from scratch. And as you can see, we have nothing. Now this is an archive, so we don't need to create a looper provider. All we need to do is create a consumer. Uh, so let's go ahead and just create a four column layout. Now we only have two products, but we'll do a four column layout here. Within our four column layout, we're gonna go ahead and delete all but one of those. Now in this one here, we're gonna go ahead and turn this into a consumer. So again, this archive already has its own looper provider on it by default. So all we need to do is begin consuming off of that provider. Now let's go ahead and inside of that column, we can add, I'm gonna do two divs here. So I'm gonna add a top div and a bottom div. And in our top div, I want this to be 350 pixels high. Obviously, this is all opinionated. You guys could do whatever you wanted. I'm going to turn on advanced in our background layers. I'm going to make this an image element. I'm going to select the product image, which is our featured image, and do this here. And we should begin seeing that featured image populating there. We'd want some alt text. So we might say it's our post title uh, featured image something like that. Obviously, you'd want to be a little more descriptive than that. In our bottom here, we're going to go ahead and grab something like a headline, pop that in here. That headline, we might want that to be an H2 or an H3. And then we want this to be our product title. So we'll go ahead and do something like this here. And that's looking pretty good. Now, let's style that just a little bit. So we'll make this bold. We'll go ahead and set some padding on our div. And maybe we want that product header to be just a little bit larger, something like this here. And that's looking pretty good. Now, we might also want the price. So let's go ahead and duplicate our headline here. And in this one, we'll go ahead and make it a span. We'll jump into our editor and we are going to grab and you can scroll down and actually find a lot of dynamic content for WooCommerce. Here we go. Page title, shop URL, cart URL, etc. We are going to jump down to product price. You can see you can grab the product price, the product regular price, the product sale price, which you recall we set, or product price HTML, which this is being pulled directly from WooCommerce. And we'll already have some of those styles in it with the regular price crossed out and the sale price underlined. Now, if you really wanted to customize this, I'd recommend grabbing those two elements, those two pieces of dynamic content separately, but this will give us a good starting point. We can do something like this make it, you know, I don't know, some sort of green so it looks like it's on sale, something like that. Make this, you know, 1.25M so we can actually see it there. And maybe we want that down on the bottom. Something like that I think is pretty good. And so we have product A, product B, but clicking on these isn't gonna do anything yet. Uh, so let's go ahead and get down to our column layer here. And we want that entire column to be an A tag, which is a link. And you'll see our link fields open up here when we do that. And we want to dynamically link this to whatever the product's permalink is. So now clicking anywhere in this container is going to link us out to product A and anywhere in this container is going to link us out to product B. But you can't really tell that it's clickable. So let's go ahead and on our column again, we're going to jump into effects and we're going to link our child interactions. Now, first interaction on the column itself, we are going to add a transform. You could do whatever you wanted here, but we're going to add in just a little bit of Y axis, uh, let's say negative three pixels. And that just kind of moves everything up when we hover on it. And we want that to be just a little bit slower, in my opinion. So we're going to do 500 milliseconds on the transition time. 
and now it's more of a slow hover, but you can't totally see that effect taking place. So let's jump back over to our primary. Let's make the entire background of our product container white. So you'll notice that goes all the way through now, even this div. And let's go ahead and I'm gonna actually round our edges just a little bit here. We're gonna make our overflow hidden so that rounded edge takes place all around our images here as well. And then let's go ahead and add a box shadow and pick something sort of arbitrary here. Maybe there's no box shadow on base, but when you hover, there is, you know, some sort of box shadow here. So zero or transparent on base interaction 0.25. So now when we hover, kind of looks like it's floating a little bit there. I think that looks pretty good. We could also, you know, let's say we wanted the short description that we had added in when we configured our products. We could add that in right below the price here, and that would populate the short description for us here. I'm going to add just a little bit of top margin on that just to push it down a little bit. And obviously, you'd want to play with your design and with your styles to make all of this work, but I think that's looking pretty good. Now, you know, I kind of want these to be just a little bit wider, so let's just make this a three wide. Even though we don't have a third product, That'll give us just a little more space here for these products. And so there we go. That's looking pretty good. Now, as you'll recall, over in our archive settings, we've already assigned this to our shop. So when we go ahead and save and we jump back over to our shop here that we had, which was just the default styles, and we refresh, our new cornerstone archive is being automatically assigned to the shop page. And this is looking pretty good. Now, product B, it looks like doesn't have a featured image in here. Uh, and there's a couple of things we could do. One, go back and set that featured image. But two, let's say a client, uh, you know, forgets to upload images or that could happen, right? We can actually duplicate this div using some conditional logic. We duplicate this div and instead of a featured image element, let's go ahead and just turn this off. Let's go ahead and make the background, I don't know, blue. So we have this div here, which has a blue background and we have, uh, let's go ahead and do an icon and drop the icon right in here. Now let's make that icon um, image, you know, maybe something like this here. Let's go ahead and center that. We'll do flex box and we can just click this center all button. Now on this second one, we're gonna come into customize on that div. Under conditions, we are going to say featured image is not set. So we wanna show this blue one when the featured image is not set. And this top one, which has the featured image in it, we wanna do the same thing we want to say featured image is set. And so we have something like this here. Now, when we refresh this, let's jump over to our shop page and refresh. We've created a little bit of a fallback. We've said, okay, if there is no featured image set for our product, we want to show this. And if there is a featured image set, show the featured image. So a little bit of a fallback just to preserve the integrity of your design. But now if we jump back into the back end here, we go into our products, we jump into product B, we'll jump over to our product image, We'll go ahead and set our product image. So we'll click update. We've saved the featured image here to product B. Let's jump back over to our shop page here. And because we have this conditional logic in, we don't need to change anything. Let's go ahead and refresh our WooCommerce shop page here. And it automatically recognized that there now is a featured image set. And so it pulls that through. So we've created our WooCommerce shop page. We've consumed our products that we have in our product database. We've pulled through some dynamic content on those products and we've linked those little product cards out to the individual products. But when I click on this product A, those individual product pages are sort of that vanilla look. And that is because we haven't set our individual or our single product post templates yet. So let's jump back into Cornerstone, click that plus sign. And again, we wanna make sure we're grabbing our WooCommerce single template here. Go ahead and click create. Now, obviously there's a lot of stuff that you can do here. The easiest way is to start with one of the pre-built theme co templates uh, for products, but we're gonna go ahead and just do a simple one from scratch. So let's click from scratch. We'll do a side-by-side. -side. On the left-hand side here, we are going to want our product image. So we might do something like this here. Now you might be wondering to yourself, why is nothing showing up? And that is because we didn't do our assignment. So let's go over to settings. Let's give this a name. First and foremost, we'll call this product single. And now we want to assign our conditions. We want this to apply to all products. And then again, once we've done that, we also just want to make sure that we're previewing the right thing while we are building. So let's come over here and click product and it will select one of the products from our database here in this case, product A. And if you wanted to view a specific product, 
you could switch this to product B or whatever. So now we are accurately seeing our product image here. Let's go ahead and give this a little bit of a vertical size. Let's call it 550 pixels. So it's this nice big hero image for our product here. And obviously you'd want to make sure you're giving this some alt tags and, and all of that fun stuff, but we're just going to kind of move quickly on this. On this side here, I'm just going to do this quickly. We are going to just type in title and grab our product title here. Um, you could also just do this with a headline element and just uh, dynamically grab that product title as well, but we'll just drop this in here and use the pre-configured style. We could then grab our product description. So let's go here and type in description. We have our long description and our short description. This might be our long description area. So let's go ahead and grab our long description and pop that right in here. And so now we have our long description being populated here. Now you'll notice there isn't the ability to style our long description when you're using the long description element. And that's because this element is inheriting the styles from your global styles, kind of like a blog post would. But if we delete that element, we come over here and we just grab a standard text element and let's pop that in here. You'll notice a standard text element has all of our controls here so we can completely control things. So we'll just jump into our text area, go into our content, and right in here, we're just gonna type in double curly. So curl curl DC post the underscore content and then end our double curlies. And that will pull through our long description. But now in that long description, we have access to all of our text styling options. So we could give this, you know, a height value of 1.4, something like this, space it out a little bit. Maybe it's 1.25 is our font size there, something like this here. And maybe we space the headline, give it a little bit of margin to separate that out from the text area, something like this here. There we go. I think that's looking pretty good. But now nobody has a way of purchasing our product. Well, we're going to jump back into our elements here and we're going to type in button. And you'll notice we have quite a few different buttons. You could actually do this with a standard button so you could drag this out. But Cornerstone has some really nice presets built in for WooCommerce like the add to cart button. So we could grab this here and drag this out here. So here is our add to cart button. Now, I kind of want that button to be spaced out a little bit. So on our text here, I'm just going to add a little bit more margin, maybe two M's, and that'll bump down our button here and so that's probably looking pretty good you know what we might do here is on our column let's turn flexbox on and let's turn vertical centering on so now this is sort of centered with this here i think that's looking pretty good so now you'll notice let's jump back into our add to cart button we're going to go ahead and click on our magnifying glass here and you'll notice it already has a pre-configured dynamic url which is question mark add to cart equals and then the WooCommerce product ID for whatever product we're on here. So that automatically adds it to cart. Further, if you jump into the customize of this add to cart button, you'll notice that it has some classes so that Ajax functions properly and it has quite a few custom attributes. So a quantity of one, a product ID of whatever the product ID is, a product SKU of whatever the SKU is set to in WooCommerce, an ARIA label of add whatever the WooCommerce product name is to your cart, uh, and then a no follow attribute. So with all of that done, if we were to refresh this, and again, make sure that your proper assignments have been created here. Now, when we jump over to product A on the front end here and we refresh, our new template layout is being applied. Now I can click on this add to cart button and it is added to my cart. But right now I have no way of getting to that. Now, obviously you could design this page out further. You could be pulling from other custom fields on the back end of your product. You could be pulling through the price, all of that fun stuff. But what we're gonna do now is figure out how we can access our cart and how we get to checkout. Now, usually something like this, like a cart would be in the header. So let's go ahead and click our plus sign. We're gonna create a header. And I like to label these something like GN1, just so I know this is my global navigation one, but you name it whatever you want to. Under our settings, we need to make sure we assign this. I'm going to assign this one to the entire site, just so it's set up like that. And we'll create this from scratch. Now, we're not gonna get into a whole lot of actual styling here. And here's what we are going to do. We are going to jump into our elements and we are going to type in off canvas. This is something that I prefer, but you guys could do this plenty of different ways. You could start from scratch here and just pull out your off canvas element, but Cornerstone has a pre-configured cart for off canvas that is still fully customizable. It's just a prefab element with all of the sub elements inside it. So we'll go ahead and drop that into our navigation here. 
And I kind of want this to be on the right hand side just because that's what you traditionally see. So we're going to jump into our container. We are going to jump down to our flex box and we are going to set this to end. And that way that just jumps over to the right hand side here. And I also want my bar to have a max width of something like 1200 just so it's not touching the edges there. So here we go. That's looking pretty good. Now you'll notice if I click on that, we have our mini card in here. We could name this your awesome cart, right? So you have full access to this. You could add additional text in here if you wanted to, to you know, create a message for your customers. You could use dynamic content to show that message, you know, based on whether they're logged in or not, things like that. So we could do things like this here. We could add a little bit of margin on that and bump down our mini cart just a little bit here. And we can go ahead and save that. Now, let's say we also wanted to show the quantity of items that are in the cart. Well, we can do that as well. We can actually click on our cart here so that it is selected, jump over here and select the toggle itself. We're gonna enable text on that toggle and we need it to stretch a little wider than the three M's it's currently set at. So let's just go ahead and set this to auto and auto for now. And then we'll jump down here. Let's go ahead and just give it a 0.35 border radius, get rid of our box shadow. And here we are going to type cart and then i'm actually just going to add something like this jump into our dynamic content type cart come down here and i want cart item count real time and i'll end the bracket here as well now we have something like this we'll go ahead and save jump over to our product a and refresh now we have one item in our cart i can click on that cart i can see the item in my cart here I can view the cart page if I have that set, or I can jump to check out where I can pay for the product. Uh, if we go ahead and add another product, so let's go ahead and do this, add to cart. You'll notice this up here immediately changes to two. I could add one more, and up here, this is here, changes to three. So now this is working. If I click on this, I can see that my quantity is three as well. Three at $8 gives us a subtotal of $24 and then we could proceed to check out. Now I know that this might seem like a lot, but in a short amount of time, what we have done is configured our products on the back end of WooCommerce, created our WooCommerce shop page within Cornerstone, created the single product pages within Cornerstone, created the add to cart functionality, and created our cart in the navigation as well with access to checkout. And now you are empowered to go out there and build your very own WooCommerce sites using the powerful Cornerstone Builder. Happy building.